everyone, so today I'm going to be doing part two of the books to read in pairs tag. I was tagged in this by Amy Jane Smith and I love this tag so much that I decided to do it twice. It was originally created by Jen Campbell and I will link her original video of this down below as well. I mentioned this book in basically every other video. In fact, I mentioned it in part one of my books to read in pairs tag, but I think this is another pairing that would work really well for it. So I think alongside George Eliot's Middlemarch, you should read Rebecca Mead's The Road to Middlemarch. I feel like at this point, I don't need to tell you much more about Middlemarch. If you've been watching my channel for a while, I, I do basically rave about it every other video. I dipped in and out of this book when I was studying Middlemarch, but I've never read the whole thing and I really, really want to get to it soon. It is a non-fiction book. It, it's like part memoir, part biography, part literary love letter to George Eliot. It is about the power of fiction and the way reading can enrich our lives and make our lives better with a particular focus on George Eliot's Middlemarch. I think these would be really fantastic to read together and I wish I'd been able to read the full thing when I was studying this. The next two books I want to recommend that you read in pairs are The Museum of You by Caris Bray and What a Way to Go by Julia Forster. I'd show you my copy of What a Way to Go but one of my friends is still borrowing it. <laughs> I'm sure you've heard of The Museum of You. This is about a young girl named Clover whose mother passed away when she was very young and she begins to collect her mother's possessions that her father has hoarded in the spare room and she begins to curate the museum of her mother, The Museum of You. What a Way to Go is a book that is very much grounded in the 80s and is likewise about a young girl. Her parents have separated and it's about her navigating that relationship and trying to make those relationships work and holding everything together when all of the people around her are falling apart. They're about quite different situations but I think tonally they're quite similar. They both have this young adult point of view, like very young adult point of view, that cusp between childhood and young adult. They both deal with young girls going through puberty. They're both books very grounded in family. And for those reasons, I think they'd be fantastic books to read alongside each other. I think I read them a couple of months apart, but they definitely reminded me of each other. Speaking of young adult, my next two picks for books to read in pairs is The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky and Looking for Alaska by John Green. When I was a teenager, I read these books very, very close together. I think I probably picked them up one after the other. I feel like they're both really sort of iconic YA books. And they're often the books that get people back into reading when they go through a bit of a teenage not reading slump. They're both books that I really want to reread soon, particularly Looking for Alaska, because I do think my feelings on it will change on a reread. I don't think this is a recommendation that will work for everyone, but if these are the kinds of books that you enjoy, then I would highly recommend reading them together. My next pairing is If You Are Reading More Fill Me by Stephen Fry. You might be interested in picking up The Hippopotamus by Stephen Fry. More Fool Me is, I think, Stephen Fry's third autobiography, and it deals with the period of his life which he was writing this in. So I think it would be really interesting to read them alongside each other and see what bits of this are referred to in the autobiography. I didn't massively enjoy More Fool Me. I did find it kind of um, annoyingly upper middle class. And I think that is something that Stephen Fry is aware of, but it did just kind of start to grate on me a bit. Although I still think it would be fascinating to read this book alongside it and see how the two weave in and out of each other. My next pairing is The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath and The Colour Purple by Alice Walker. I absolutely love both of these books. And the reason I think you should pair them together is because while The Bell Jar is absolutely fantastic, it is one of my favourite books ever and I definitely want to reread it soon. It is very white. Like, it, it's feminist, but it, it, it's very white. It's feature mental illness, but other than that, it's not particularly intersectional or inclusive of a variety of different kinds of women. And I think reading The Colour Purple at a similar time to reading The Bell Jar would be really, would be really beneficial. It has queer women, it has queer women of colour, it has women of colour that have very different experiences as women of colour. A thoroughly brilliant, brilliant read. And the final pairing that I want to talk about is Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, which I think would be really good to read alongside The Magicians by Lev Grossman. Grossman? Grossman? I never know. This is one of my favourite books. I've never found out how to pronounce his last name. This recommendation kind of goes for any of the Harry Potter books, but I think the Half-Blood Prince in particular, because it really deals with the real legitimate dangers of the wizarding world and heading towards a wizarding war. And it also has a lot to do with adolescence and relationships. Kind of just navigating the world as a teenager 
while all this crazy stuff is going on. The Magicians is a book about a young man named Quinton who is whisked away to this magical school, very reminiscent of Hogwarts in that sense. And a lot of this book kind of deconstructs the ideals of going to magical worlds. It has a commentary on why we want to go to Hogwarts when it's proven that it's so dangerous. It kind of shows that Hogwarts was a school, you had to do work. This fantasy we have of going to Hogwarts is just going to school. Eventually the novelty does wear off and you find yourself just becoming frustrated with your schoolwork. It goes a lot deeper into that as well, but I don't want to give away any spoilers. This is another book that I really want to reread. I remember just completely devouring it when I first read it. Do not read this book though if you don't want to think critically about Harry Potter and general children's fantasy. If you don't want to think critically about it, this isn't the book for you. It is going to challenge all your fantasies of going to Hogwarts and it's not going to be subtle about it. So that was my part two of the books to read in pairs tag. I do hope you've enjoyed and got some decent recommendations from this video. I'm not going to tag anyone in particular but if you haven't done this tag yet you should because it's really really fantastic and it gets you really thinking about what you kind of enjoy in books. Let me know if you have any thoughts on any of the books that I've mentioned and I will see you guys in a few days.